Hi, Cedric. Say hello. Hello. G'day everyone, Byron here and welcome to my video on how to do a Hobie Kayak Brim Series fishing round. So it's round three of the 2019 series. Uh, it's sponsored by Cranker and I'm here on the Georges River. You can tell from behind me, um, I've gone up river. It's my pre-fish day, so I'm just checking out some spots, seeing what the fish are doing. It's uber low tide at the moment and the fish are on the bite. So uh, what I'm going to cover in today's video is basically for the first time is what you need to do to do a comp so that you at least know what's going on. So I'll take you through the live well setups, how to cull fish, how to weigh fish, where the weigh master is, get a key tag, all that sort of stuff. Now there's, I guess, two main points I wanna to make to start. Number one, yes, I am in a Hobie Pro Angler 14. You do not need this kayak to do these rounds. In fact, I would encourage you if you have any other competitors other than Hobie to do these rounds. Now, why is it the Hobie kayak round? Because the guys that run it are from Hobie. So of course they're gonna write the name, name basically on the series, that makes sense. Um, but I have seen prowlers, I have seen the predators, I have seen, I've seen the $400 Chinese variant with an esky on the back competing in these rounds. So get involved because it is so, so much fun. Number two, you do not need to be pro, semi-pro, sponsored, semi-sponsored, you don't need to be amateur plus you don't need to be even good you can be a beginner when i started doing these rounds i'd had a rod in my hand for two months i fished as a kid i lost the passion i came back as an adult wanting a hobby and basically went man i suck it's been 20 years lures have come a long way i can't catch a fish what am i going to do where can i find people that know how to catch fish oh wait a minute i'll do a hobie round and i haven't stopped doing this my fifth year now since i did the first one the inclusiveness that you get on these rounds is second to none and what i mean by that is on my first round i donutted on day one i got zero fish and i was like ah oh, man i suck and then a couple of the guys that had been doing it for a while pulled me aside and went, hey man, here's some lures, here's some line. This is what I was doing with those lures today to get my fish. I went out on the second day, smashed it, got heaps and heaps of fish. Thank you to the series for showing me basically how to fish. So if you come to the round and you're a first timer and you don't do too well, or you see me around, I guarantee I'm gonna do that for you, cool? I'm gonna do that for you. I'm gonna tell you where the fish are. And I have to be honest, I'm not the only guy that does that. I know Carl Dubois does it, Rich Summerton does it, um, Morley does it. A whole bunch of people share all the information that they, they have and how they get their fish on the water to make your experience better. And to be honest with you, I really enjoy that component of it. The community and the fact that a lot of these places, everybody stays together. You know, that's tops, that's tops. And you make some friends from interstate and you get to travel and see the best parts of Australia. The video will go for a few minutes, but that's designed for the new guy to take you through everything that you need to know. I really hope you enjoy it. The beginning. Catching some little guys on edges. And we're getting medium sized ones. And that bad boy is the uh, ghost gill. And they're sitting on the edges, even though it's ridiculously low tide, they're sitting on that corner there. I'm now going to leave that spot. Mmm, and the cranker crab, yeah. That works too, yeah, the cranker crab. Mm. That's pre-fish done. Let's talk about what happened today and how you can capitalize. So first of all, pre-fish. What you really want out of that is to find fish, patterns, spots, but not burn them. If you burn the spot, you may as well have not found it at all and it's no good to go. And what I mean by that is that second cast. One cast, catch a fish. Second cast, don't do it. Do not do it, stay away from it. Now, if you don't have enough confidence, and I understand that I was there, if you don't have enough confidence in that, hey, I wanna throw a second cast because I just wanna confirm, AKA James Kilpatrick, then just don't. So you can confirm by other methods. Let me find a bit of structure here. So behind me, I've got uh, a pontoon that looks like that. And there's a certain amount of depth underneath it, a certain amount of flow around it. Now, if I throw into that area and get a fish, great. Don't throw in there again. Do not do it. Now, you can see further down, there's more. Now, it's probably a bit too close for a confirmer, but I might go five, six, I don't know if there's one down here or something, but if there was one down there, that was the same, you know, same amount of depth, same flow, same wind on it, same direction. I'd use that to confirm. That's the way you do it. 
it also reinforces to you that the plan that you have is good across multiple positions. So definitely think about that. But that's what you want in a pre-fish. You want a plan to go and execute. And look, if it doesn't work, you just adapt. But I've got enough information out of my day today so that I'm confident the next day uh, to have a go. If you don't find fish on the pre-fish, that's also a good sign. Not only do you get a bit of fishing currency up, but you also know where not to fish or how the fish weren't biting that day. At least at the very least, you get to see the waterway, you get to see what was going on and hopefully give you a bit of more information on how to fish the day. All right, we're getting ready for day one after pre-fish. I'm gonna redo my lines and leaders, have a look at some of those FG knots to see whether I need to retie them or not and basically check the lines. I'll also refurbish jig heads, soft plastics and upgrade some trebles on some cranks if that's required. Cool. That's the view. How good is that? Uh, fire alarm. All right, so it's wet. I've kept my phone out of the water, but I've turned up and I've set my kayaks up and you can see them all set up there and they're all ready to go. Now I just need to register. Registration is easy. You turn up, you collect a key tag, you show them your license and your PFD and you're good to go. Thank you. And you can get some food if you need it. Usually bars, chips, and drinks. I got plenty. So this is some footage this morning of Steve giving us a morning brief on the weather, the length of the fish, the number of fish, and all the information we need for the day. As somebody hits me, Michi, to own the nuts. Appreciate it. Um, from here, everybody goes to their boats and starts to launch. Right, so it's a little wet. Everybody's launched in the water, and basically, Steve's out there starting his live stream. We're all holding between a couple of uh, two white markers that you can see just there. And uh, in a moment, when he starts us off, uh, we're going to go for those two black markers. Now, you've got a couple of choices. You can sit at the front and uh, and pedal fast, or you can just chill out down the back. I reckon. In, for the very first time, you just chill out, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. Just chill out at the back, have a look at where everyone's going, and then uh, either follow them or go to your own spot. And that is the start. He just calls anglers away, gives you a bit of a time warning. And it's a wide start line, so not everyone's cramped in, but everyone is kind of cramped on the right here. You can get a good look at performances. <laughs> and Costa's gone backwards. Oh yeah. <laughs> and that, my friends, is the guy that came second last year. Now you just pedal to your spot. And now we start fishing. And then we start catching. Get the wrong species. It's my own opinion in the comp that when you've got these three in there, things become good and you can look for upgrades. No more pressure. We're upgrading, but we're upgrading slowly. Right, so it's seven hours of fishing on both days. It's 10 o'clock now, so I've gone through three hours. I've got four left. Things are good, I've got the bag, got a couple of upgrades, lost some donkeys, but now I'm trying to figure out what I want to do for the rest of the day. So I've got four hours left. How exactly to plan that? I need fish. The comp side of the house, me personally, I want to upgrade now um, and I want the big fish. But realistically, the first time, you should be happy with a bag. You should be happy with a bag on both days. So I've left the spots where I got fish, but then somebody rolled in on them. But it's all good. And every now and again, you lose a donkey. All right, so there's three minutes left to weigh in. Everyone's just walking up here. You can see these guys and they're, they're dropping their key tags off. So you get your key tag number and you throw it up there and that's you home safe. If you don't have that key tag up in time, you just, uh, you award a penalty. Nobody likes penalties. Once you get back, you jump in the line. I should have done this earlier, but long story short. So they start with the number of bags, you go up and weigh and then you come back into the line. There was about a line of 30 or 40 odd people here before. So Andrew at the moment's following Glenn out. So Glenn's going to get a photo with the fish out of the the, uh, the camera dude there. And he's going to give his bag to Andrew who was next in line. Then Andrew's going to go pick his fish up from his kayak and then walk over to the bump tub and then wait for his turn to go up to the Waymaster. And now we pack up. Righto, so once you're done with the Waymaster, you are cleared off. A few of us hung around, we watched all the fishermen uh, weigh in to see all the bags and where everything was at. Uh, we packed our gear up at the, in, at the same time 
and then uh, we bounce off to the hotel. I've redone my leaders and got everything ready again for day two. That's the first thing that I do. That way I don't have any uh, outstanding items to do in, in the morning. We got back to the hotel and we organised dinner. Now generally on Saturday night things get pretty social. Uh, everybody's meeting up again after not seeing each other for a while. So like Ben River, every competitor goes to the pub. At Malakuda, everybody basically goes to the pub. Um, and then, believe it or not, in Sydney, there's about 15 of us going to the pub tonight. That'll be uh, a lot of fun. Now, a lot of the guys will talk about what they caught their fish on today. It's generally accepted that if somebody's doing well, basically don't say much at all. And that's cool. We all understand that. But uh, some guys, even you know when they're coming first and second, uh, do still talk about what they did to uh, catch the fish. So someone like me at the moment, who's probably in the bottom third, I haven't checked my standings, uh, but... I will now just divulge everything to all the guys that I'm having dinner with. Basically a bit of information sharing back and forth so that maybe tomorrow I can put a respectable bag in. I won't be in the contention tomorrow, but I'd really like to go out there, have a lot of fun, catch a lot of fish and uh, really make a great day of it. I didn't mention it yesterday, but make sure you bring wet weather gear and bring some warm clothes. You don't have to wear them or take them with you, just be prepared. And we're away. It's a chaos. And we do some more traveling and some more catching. It's on a ghost kill, that bad boy. He's all right. Right, so I'm going to do this with one hand. We'll see how it goes. but. Someone asked about upgrading. So this guy has gone 27 fork and it is my smallest fish. So what I do, a little pin just below the mouth as a soft, if I open his mouth, you'll see a bit of soft tissue there that opens up. So what I'm gonna do is try and put the little pin through there and mark him. So that's gone through and then he comes out the, the mouth as I just use my second hand. Yeah, sorry about that, that was never gonna work one handed. So that's gone through. You can see that spot, nice, fleshy, soft, doesn't hurt the fish, it's not around the mouth, which means he is good to go. All right, so he's the smaller fish in my bag at the moment. He goes in, and he's got those curl tags. Now there, he's gonna go a little bit upset as he settles down, and then when I need to, I'm gonna grab that red curl tag, pull it out, and voila. So that is how you cull, easy peasy. And we're catching little ones. The thing about fishing by yourself is that you don't get to take photos. So the social thing is we've got Cullen here. He's on a good fish. What'd you get on? He's got on a gob crabby. How good. Oh, it is a good fish. It's like a mid to high 30s. And sometimes you get the good one. Right, so how to fish the tournaments. It's important to note that Jim Barry usually does the timetables in consultation with Steve as well, obviously, but uh, they will have the tidal flows uh, set out for a particular reason. So at Port Macquarie, uh, usually they have the tide running in to help everybody up and then tide running out to help everyone back down to the launch. Here at Sydney this weekend, the tide's running out to start, so that'll help everyone get back to Botany Bay. So just consider obviously how the timings and the uh, tides can help with you getting to your position or not getting to your position. <laughs> we also get the bird's nest. Couldn't fix it, so the new reel goes on. So you get a couple of nice fish for you and your pair, and then a third guy turns up magically. And you get some cool photos. Right, so that's a wrap as the Hobie uh, van goes our way. Congrats to the uh, top three and the play skaters, but you can see behind me the guys already started to pack up. And then around on this side, you can see everybody's starting to leave, all the gear's packed up, and we are ready to go. Weigh in at the day two is very much similar to day one, except that the top five guys will weigh in uh, last and um, then there'll be a presentation afterwards. You don't have to stick around, but I always do. Uh, it's a good environment for the guys that actually uh, placed well. Right, so that's basically around. If you've got any questions at all, 
uh, hit us up, but uh, hopefully I covered the majority of uh, what I needed to. Anyway, uh, from the Sydney round, Byron out.